Podcast, Ian Anderson, Eagle McMahon, Central Coast Disc Golf, for bringing you some more 2019 Wintertime Open, the 41st annual, and uh, it's about to get even wetter, Eagle. Oh, yes. We're <laughs> out in the desert now. And the, of course. The, the deserts definitely don't miss the rain out here right now. No, they don't. It is not wanting for water, as that puddle shows. Um pretty kind of a mediocre round so far which is understandable given the conditions uh looks like steve's leading the card with that two down um everyone's within striking distance though absolutely um we are on to our first of our 500 footers a whole 10 um we did move the t-pad because this was flooded Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's a little bit easier not to worry about this tree coming out and there's a big bomb yeah exactly um yeah 475 feet and i almost feel like it plays a little bit longer than that um but yeah, you really sh- there's really not too much danger on this hole. It's basically just throw as far as you want. Yeah, there was a little bit of a headwind though here. It looks like Paul's got that force again. Yeah, um, Paul throwing 62 miles per hour and just pulling it far right. And I've I've noticed when you throw like high speed drivers in uh-huh. the rain, they always have a tendency to flip. Interesting. Uh huh. I guess they're hitting more stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably slowing them down. The more stuff in the air. That's it. It's kind of like going to, le- to low elevation. Mm-hmm. From high- huh. And the pad is so slick right here. Yeah, not optimal. What'd you throw here? That was a DD3 Cloudbreaker. Nice. And uh, that was at 67 miles per hour. Ripping it. You still have our high score. I do? Yeah. Okay, cool. 78 miles an hour out of Beaver State Fling. And a B O oh, no. Oh, no. That's like... That's a th- borderline throller. It was a <laughs> star destroyer. This is definitely not the hole you want to throw a roller. On. No, it's it's not optimal. You gotta put some mountain bike tires on your <laughs> on your disc. <laughs> we got a, a luster destroyer from AB for his second shot. I almost can't tell. Where... It's coming in. I mean, f- he has a little bit of a look. Yeah, he does. You want it, it looks like a little more left. That's really not the shot you want to be throwing on on this hole. No, you want like one of these or shorter. Yeah, you want to, you or want a putt. To, yeah, you want a putt on this one. Yeah, uh, that was Steve with a nice up shot. Uh, he threw a pinnacle cannon on his tee shot. Uh, Paul. Paul from a ways away. Yeah, you can see the basket kind of hiding over there behind that bush as we look at a jet propulsion laboratory in the background. And he doesn't get full connection on it, but he gets over that bush. Yeah, which is the important part, right? I'm throwing a DP3X here. I hit the cage. Oh, oh man. That, that would have been a really good uh, momentum shift right there. That would have been a nice highlight uh-huh. for the day, man, yeah. And here is AB's look. Not easy. He still has to contend with this bush. You really don't want to be on this side of it if, if you can't help it. And Oh, just misses left. Yeah. Uh, Paul for his bird. Nicely done. I mean, you know he wanted the eagle, though. Mm-hmm, absolutely. It's re- it would be really difficult to get an eagle on this hole, especially right now. Yeah. I heard you were throwing past this basket in practice. I, yeah, the cloud breaker was uh, tracking this thing pretty good on some on some hyzers. Hopefully, uh, we'll get to see that uh, in rounds to come. Yeah. It is beautiful today. For it the is re- beautiful today. <laughs> Not a cloud in the sky. It's being actual Southern California. Good look at Paul ripping on that force. Uh, he still has amazing form despite changing discs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crazy. Uh, some nice birdies there. AB again. No star frame to be found. Um, but at least everyone is even or better. And we're on to hole 11. Pretty optimal forehand hole. Yeah. If, if you got the shot, then uh, forehand on this is, is definitely what you want to be throwing. Yep. And they actually move the tee pad up probably. Oh, like, yeah. 25 to 30 feet from where the drone was flying. Yep. Um, I think that's just to... I, I don't know. I'm not sure the reason, but... And you can see Paul not happy about this one right out of his hand. That's that Thrasher again? Uh, right? Tracker, Tracker, thank you. Thank you. Just didn't commit to it or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. no. Uh, Rico? Rico taking a wide hyzer. And I mean, if you play it wide enough and know how your disc lands, then the hyzer definitely is a viable option, mm-hmm. as Steve shows. Yeah, that, that worked. He threw his enemy right there beautifully. Reaching for an FD3. This is a cloud breaker as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh. just wanted to throw something a little bit faster. 
Interesting. Because it was slippery. Okay. On the on the teapad, so I could just really club down and not put too much energy into it. Cool. Still going maybe a touch long? Yeah, it's probably like 30, 35 downhill. That's a scary putt with that yeah. OB behind. An AB reaching for a destroyer? A McPro destroyer. He's throwing like $3,000 uh, out of bounds right, right now. <laughs> oh, no. He needed the Firebird on this shot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a confirmed 3K. Yeah. Easy. That's that's wild. So he's going to be going back a ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, reaching for the Nova on the upshot here. Oh, and he's running it. He is. I thought oh. it was going to go in for a second, but unfortunately it goes kind of long. A little bit long right there. Yeah. Those Novas aren't too grabby today. This wet ground, they're kind of just skidding. And Paul with the OB behind. Oh, the McLayup. Yep. And he actually, yeah. this actually, he lays up and it backfires. It does. <laughs> and it, it rolls probably like, I don't know, 20, 25 feet away. Yeah. Uh, you got a birdie look here. Kind of. Yeah, scary this, bid. This is pretty scary. And... I, d I really don't know what that was. <laughs> that looked really funny from that angle. Uh, AB coming back for his four. Oh, good hit from AB to stop the bleeding. Right? Oh, man, that would a five would have hurt right there on a, on, a, on a birdie hole. And this basket's a little bit tougher to putt at just because of the, um, the old style mm -hmm. uh, cage. It's a little bit more shallow, and you'll get a little bit more uh, weird hits on this basket. Oh, man. Speaking of weird hits. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that really hurts, especially when you intend to lay up to get your three. Right? That is just the absolute worst outcome. I'm maybe a few feet closer from where Paul was. And somehow it goes in. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Nice par save. And uh, Rico, the best birdie look here. Nice spot from Steve. Yeah. We got twos, we got threes, and we got fours. Yeah. He's good at those low sneakers. Yeah. You know, with his spin putt. Yeah, and there's that four. You from can definitely Paul. tell Rico's putt has been developed to stick on baskets like these since I, he's been playing for so long. That is a good point. I didn't think about he's that. He's got that, like, soft nose up. Mm hmm. Got a good look at Steve's compact form. Still crushes. Absolutely. Stoked to see him on tour, more tour this uh, this year. Oh, he he's gonna be out there a little bit more. Yeah, with awesome. the, he and uh, Nick Newton are hitting hitting the road. Cool. Yeah, I always enjoy playing with Rico and seeing him out there. I heard Jerry Go Jerry Goff's not gonna be out there awesome. ripping up some Grandmasters. Uh, hole twelve, another another big hole eagle. Yeah, five hundred uh, twenty feet, the mound hole. The tee pad has been moved a little bit further um, left. I don't know if that puts extra distance on it, but it brings the tree to the left in the play a little bit more. True. And um, yeah, it's a more kind of direct direct shot at it now. Mm -hmm. now this is a pinnacle can from Steve and just unfortunately flips it a little bit too much. Oh, I should be able to get up and down for the birdie though. Eagle, what do you got? This is a cloud breaker. And as I was saying, the, the rain really flips discs over, I feel. Yeah. And uh, I, I get, virtually pin high right there yeah and yeah i mean there's nothing really you can say about that shot yeah it's easy birdie at least mm -hmm. yeah uh, paul with the force it looks like paul dialed in the angle right here this is looking really good isn't it but it catches that bush oh, and man just need a couple more feet of elevation and that's that's a solid eagle look yeah absolutely yeah. ab has all the distance to get to this hole yes he does and just throws it into the ground. That's a destroyer. Yeah, I imagine that there's a, there was a grip issue there. Yeah, with the, with this rain. I'm sure you you don't see that from maybe often, if ever. Uh, Steve's second shot. Yeah, he puts it close enough. He's inside the circle, but he is looking up at this uh, treacherous green. Yeah, you might be, like to be a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. You want to be as close as you can to this basket. Absolutely. There's some scary putting. I would know. <laughs> Don't watch last year's footage, guys. There is a Nova upshot from AB. That's not the best looking putt. No, he, that's that's very scary right now. Yeah, uh, looks like a, a Luna upshot from Paul. I'm getting my feet a little bit wet right yeah. here, wetter than they already are. Oh man. And yeah, I'm just trying to pitch it up. I mean, if you're over on the right side, it's like 
up approaching onto a backbone. It there's is. Not, there's not much room to land. You got to think about your angles uh -huh. really hard. And luckily that hit and, hit and sat. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, clean up a par. Here is Steve Rico looking for his three. And it just hits a little bit high. Yeah. A lot of chains, but it just didn't, didn't want to stick. Thankfully, yours does after a nice putt. Yeah, that was a little bit left. Luckily, it still stayed in. Uh, there is an AB cleanup and a Paul Birdie. And uh, Steve will come in and drop in par as well. Definitely one you want to walk away with at least a three on. Yeah, for sure. With all that pro, I mean, pro power. I guess it's hole 10 and 12. They're both par fours, but I mean... You're, you're gunning for birdie on them, or at the very least, wanting to walk out with a three. Yeah. Ford feels like a bogey. It does. Uh, there are those two birds from yourself and Paul getting under. And we were looking at hole 13, and this pond has a lot more water in it yesterday. Yeah, the gorge. Yeah, yeah it's, it's bone dry right now. Which it is not right now. <laughs> no. This was like three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. It's been dumping in some And I think um, they pushed the basket a little bit further back yes. as well. Yeah, correct. The, they were worried about it getting underwater. What are you going for here, Eagle? Right here, this was a, um, a crowned eagle, color glow MD3. I okay. like playing a MD3 on this hole just for the glide. I can put it way, way right. I like that play, and it, it sits nice, too. Mm -hmm. This is a wasp. This, this is a drone. Oh, the drone again. Dude, the drone, and that was at 55 miles per hour right there. Okay. Hanging out with yourself, it looks mm -hmm. like. Got Steve. He has thrown an enemy. Nice and wide. And that's coming in nice. If he would have got the, the dry ground, it would have skipped a yeah. lot closer. It's kind yeah. of stuck. And A B, after reading all your skips, let's see if he adjusts and tries to hunt it a little bit closer. He's throwing that champ firebird. And that was at fifty one miles per hour. Is that it? Mm hmm Wow. That was perfect, though. That's what he needed. And there is OB behind the basket uh, from where Steve's putting. And that's awesome right there, wasn't it? Absolutely. Huge gallery watching that hole, too. It is dumping right now. Yeah, absolutely out of control. And you also have a scary look and also convert. Yeah, for some reason, um, we took the speed on that putt. That putt was... 25 miles per hour. Somebody asked, like, yeah. how fast are putts? I was like, oh, we'll try and find out for you, man. <laughs> uh, Paul's putt a little more encumbered here. Man. Yep. It's so difficult to control any type of, like, angle putting in the rain. Yeah. I think just kind of slips out. Uh, coming back for his par as everyone gets a stroke on Paul. He's ready for it to come back out of the basket, oh, I think. Man. I get to see this awesome oh, putt nice. again. I feel like with these conditions, this probably adds like an extra 10 to 15 feet onto that putt. Easy. Like that's, Easy. Def that's definitely like a 45, 50 foot. I would right for now. sure give you that. Uh, there are those three birds. Everybody is even or better again. Uh, Steve, lean the car with a five down now. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, we're on to hole 14. A couple different ways to play this hole, Eagle. Yeah. Um, the, the main route that you'll see is kind of a force over flex shot, kind of contending with that uh, metal uh, telephone pole right there. And then some people will take um, a high sidearm or either backhand up and around. And that's what I'm opting for here. I really like this play, but the one thing you have to do is not throw it in the tree. So get it a little bit higher. And where I'm at right there, you'll see oh, man. is absolute jail. What did you throw right there? That was a cloud break. Was it again? Okay, mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking so. Uh, Steve, he is reaching for an Icon Outlaw. That looks beautiful, but it hits the power of hit the, the telephone pole. Did the or pull the wire? It might. It might have been the wire. Yeah. Because it got that weird kind of skip. It did. That was looking so pretty out of his hands too. Uh, AB's got that metal flake T Bird three, and that's just as it's never gonna work on that line. Yeah, it just. It's, you could tell that uh, he was having grip issues there. What's that one, Corns? I want to say it was a tracker. Okay. Turns it over a little too mm -hmm. much, though. Um, thankfully, he hits that bush and doesn't go OB, though. Mm -hmm. 
pretty much I feel like for all of Paul's kind of fairway driver shots, he's throwing either a tracker or an undertaker. Okay. Here's AB's upshot. Not the best ground play, but not the worst either. And Steve, let's see how crafty he can get from short left. Yeah, he has a um a pretty open approach, it looks like. You would you would have traded him looks here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Here's Paul from out of the bush. Paul's fairly obstructed, but he has enough room to work. Yeah. And here you are just <sighs> Yeah. Nothing. No, there it was just branches everywhere. Uh, there there might have been a few different ways, but I, I I didn't really see any other possibilities at that time. Good putt from AB right there. Yeah, that's tremendous bar save. That was from long long range, and he's good at those. And here is your attempt at a par save. Why yeah. you, why you no stick? Yeah, all all the my putts today were just um. They were all falling left from a they were, longer they? distance. Yeah. I felt like I hit left side chains too many times. Uh, Steven and Paul cleaning up pars. We got a good look at AB's par save. Great extension. Yeah, solid commitment there. I want to say his he's not putting quite as hard. Anymore. Oh, you're right, actually. Uh -huh. Oh. He, he's toned it down a little bit. Yeah. He, used to he, de like... he definitely still jams him. Yeah. But... For a while, it was like, whoa, he's throwing fastballs every time. Yeah, solid observation, man. I, I didn't pick that up. A uh, whole 15, another par four with a, a dog leg right, and it's really another tough get eagle. Yeah, I mean, you got a double mando on this compared to previous years. Yep. And uh, basically, you want to throw a sidearm if you have the shot. I know I, I saw a few other people, AJ Risley in particular, piping some uh, backhand turnovers, and that definitely can still get you in a good position. Mm -hmm. But. The forehand is the optimal choice here. That it is, and beautiful newfound river. <laughs> Rushing river, man. Uh, Steve reaching for the legend outlaw. And he... He's safe. He's safe, and still uh, still has a look. Yeah, and Paul, oh. that's a nice kick. That's a very nice kick. Yeah. AB Star Destroyer. This is great. Isn't it? Uh-huh good skip and yeah that's there's no reason to complain about that no this is that uh, metal flake max it is and i just like it because you can throw it pretty hard on an ante and it's gonna have a massive skip that's a great drive mm -hmm. right there anyway anywhere you get past those that last group of trees and, and you're happy you got a clean up shot here a little forehand up most likely or a turnover uh paul yeah, he's throwing a titanium undertaker here, and he doesn't turn it. Oh, my goodness. So he's going to end up kind of on 18's fairway a little bit. Yeah, I, I'd say that. Yeah, and Steve getting super crafty from where he was. That, that would have worked. It just he, he came down on a tree. Yeah. Still, you can't be sad with those results from where he was. An AB, that's a uh, glow gator. Yeah, putting it right up there. Beautiful. Here is Paul's third. That looks like a zone. Fortunately, gets through that little bush. Give him a look. I have a D-line P3X right here. Wide, wide approach. And that, that puts me at 20 feet. That'll play. Yeah. All right, here's Rico's third. Just laying out for his par. Nice birdie. <laughs> just it's completely <laughs> soggy right there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be happy about it. <laughs> no, the Paul makes a good par save putt right there on that elevated basket. Tompkins getting tricky with those elevated pins. I, I, I like it on this hole. Yeah? I feel like it's that little added flair that it kind of needed. Yeah, sure. Uh, AB cleans up nicely. Steve will for a four. Get a good look at that forehand of yours. Throwing that one hard eagle. I definitely am. A little more reach back. I thought I'd put more Anheuser on it. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, birdies from yourself and a B getting back in the mix. Uh, Steve still leading the car with that five down and we're on the whole 16 scene of your famous D line FD roller. Yeah, I, I love this hole. It's 468 feet and just the way it shapes up. Uh, a forehand roller is just awesome because you can throw it flat and then get it to the ground and it just takes off. And wherever you are on this hole, you're going to have pretty much an approach as long as you don't, uh, as long as you crest that initial hill. Exactly. Uh, here's a Metal Flake T-Bird 3 from AB. That's a great shot. It is. But he is going to be pinched behind that tree. He is, yeah. Not the best landing spot after a great drive. This is a brand new D-Line FD. Just cranking on it flat. A little bit cut angle, but still. Look at that. I mean, up against that fence, it's it's a pretty easy approach from over there. It is, yeah. You got a clean alley. Now we got an enemy from Steve. And this one just came out early on him, and that's just not where you want to be. Yeah, it, it becomes super rough if you throw your drive in there. Paul? I I have no idea what he's throwing there. Hey, Sparkle, Sparkle Undertaker. Okay. He yeah. likes it. He likes it. No, that's, he actually got way down there. Uh, so Steve getting crafty, as Steve will do, throwing a forehand roller out of trouble. And that's a, Yeah, that's super good. It is. Good result. You can't really get it to this basket. Even if you got a really epic forehand roller, you just have that ditch right there that'll slow everything down. Yep. Oh, oh. speaking of ditch, yeah. that's exactly where he, he throws it. it. Right in the water. And Paul, little putter up shot. It goes a little bit long, but it's still, yeah, he's no making that. Right there. Yeah. So AB throwing the Nova on his third. Goes a little left. It long. looks like he threw a hyzer down the Anheuser gap. He did, yeah. Not wrong there. It, yeah. You're like 120, 30 feet out and you jump putt this thing, Eagle. That's not that should not be possible, man. I didn't want to jump putt it, <laughs> but just the way the gap shaped up to throw a backhand just felt too hard to do. And I could just aim a lot better with a with a jump putt. You blow my disc golf mind on the regular, man. I love it. AB with a tricky little putt there for his four. Uh, converts. Paul coming back for his birdie. Nicely done. Here, you want to clean up your birdie as well? I'd say this is one of probably my top five favorite holes on the course. I love how you play uh -huh. it, man. I really do. It's just so cool. And there is Steve. I believe he saved a four. Yeah, I, I think he did as well. Which after that drive, is that's tremendous. Okay, it's Paul Slomo there. And there are the two birdies from yourself and Paul. And uh, a good good uh, good par saves from me. Hey, we're all under par. I know, yeah. It happened, yeah. Uh, hole 17, Island Hole Eagle. Yeah, this one is, um. there's a lot of funky things in the way. You got picnic tables, you got grills, you got rocks. And uh, I, I'd say for the most part, you'll see most players running this island because even if you like hit a rock on the other side, you're going to be taking it from that side. Right. So yeah. I thought this one just misses the branch and stays safe somehow. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it, especially right now in this pouring rain. That is for sure. Uh, Paul. Paul, I want to say he's throwing, he's throwing a buzz. Is he? Yeah. Nice. I thought this was going in for a hot second. And that was that was beautiful. He parked it. He did. A B. A B throwing a Mick Pro Rock Three, and he stays safe. He did, didn't he? He did he, stay safe. That's right. He just cut in there because he was just inside the line. Uh, Steve is reaching for a pursuit. And a little more turn than he wanted. It looks like. Yeah, he's out of bounds. But like I was saying, he hit on the safe side so that's well that's where he'll be able to take it from right so trying to save par but unfortunately can't that'll turn into a four a b with a, a look for the two and that's a great pot right now yeah sure was he's had a couple of those lately i don't know if it's like a fault in my mindset but like when it's raining out and i'm that far away i have no expectations of it ever going in <laughs> 
And uh, there's one that comes up a little bit short. Kind of a weird putt with that trunk there for you. Yeah, for sure. I had to kind of throw a low ceiling style of putt right there. Yeah. And there is Paul cleaning up his birdie. Steve with a four. A variety of results on that one. And you'll come along and drop in your par. Yep, we got one hole left now, and I, I think we're all excited to probably get off the, the course. Yeah, that is for sure. I was in that club as well. But today was good for, like, super cinematic slow-mo shots. Maybe that it was. My name's Cody Britton, and it's a hot one out here, which is perfect because we're going to be talking about the heat. One of the great things about the heat is it gives any skill level player the ability to get it up to speed, to get tremendous amounts of glide. The rim fits well in anyone's hand. So one of the things that I love about this disc is how easily I can throw a consistent Anheuser. You can even use it to throw manicured shots through the woods. It's just an all around phenomenal disc. Check out the heat for yourself today. You can pick one up at Discraft.com or your local retailer. All right, guys, again, huge, huge thanks to Discraft for sponsoring the coverage, making it possible for us to get up here and do all the things we do. And uh, we'll be on to our last hole, Eagle. Finally, I was ready for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The toughest hole on the course, 596 feet. It's the same as last year. You have the Mando far down the fairway. Basically, this hole is tough. It is. Yeah, off the tee, you just wanted to pipe something straight to hopefully... Uh, have a shot to throw um, down this next tunnel here on your second shot and man that's the that's the ideal way of playing it but that never seems to happen that, that landing zone the ideal landing zone is so tiny absolutely paul throwing a titanium undertaker right here and this is pure that's and of course uh, had that smack him in the face but yeah. that, that's that's still really good yeah that's a that's a totally fine spot there are several different gaps that'll force you to four, forehand or backhand, so it's always interesting to see what happens. You see the basket hiding on the, all the way down there on the other side of a river. A, B. He's, what's he going with here? I believe that's a T bird three. Yeah, Metal Flake T bird three. You're going MD three? Yeah, I'm throwing a Color Glow uh, Crown Eagle right here. And yeah, I'm just trying to throw something low and kind of put it right where Paul did. But, Throw it a little bit high and it just gets a terrible kick. That was nasty, yeah. man. Ugh. Had no business doing that. Like he hit a trunk or anything. And Steve? Now uh, that's a star wraith, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, even though I kicked over, if I were, were like Steve or AB were, I'd probably still do the same thing and just pitch, pitch over. up to the landing zone. Yeah. And it looks like Steve's probably going to do the same. Because even where they're at, like, to try to force it around the Mando, you're really not getting that much extra distance. No. And you see, everyone just mm -hmm. does the thing you do when you don't make the landing zone. And I have a real skinny gap right here. Oh, man, I saw this. I'm like, oh, he's going to pipe it. And I almost did, but it kicks off that tree. Oh! I was almost saved by the it rope. It was that close. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. It almost nestled. Yeah. It would have been cool if it bounced off the rope. Here, wouldn't it? Just need a little more flip on that thing. That's a zone from Paul, and it's floating down the river. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, he should have an easy par, though. Yeah, he will. Uh, AB's third. Looks like that Firebird. Just too high. That's... Yeah, I mean, he'll have a, an easy approach, too. Yeah. But that his will be for a five, probably, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Steve's second shot. Open a forehand. He gets. It's a big skip. Oh, he gets in bounds. Yeah. Wow. I was that's worried that straight stick was going to kick him OB there. That's really good. That shot is really difficult. Is that? Yeah. Uh, there's AB just quickly laying up. Paul laying up for his par. There's a straight river right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. This is for my bogey. Yeah. At least he made it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is for Rico's par, right? Yeah, that was a yeah. After that drive, that's a great par save. Feels like a birdie almost. AB? Firebird putt. 
Oh, he did, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yep. And that was the first round of Paul Macbeth being sponsored by Discraft. What a trip, man. Oh, yeah. It's so funny. When those rumors started to float, people were like, no, 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 no this no, is not. No, no. no. It's here. It's real. And uh, you see Steve kicking up a little bit of water. It was wet out there. Uh, there are a couple fives. Uh, fortunately, everybody finishes under. Very nice. Uh, but they are a little bit off the lead, as we will see here in a second. As we get a look at our top 10 in our lead card uh, for round two. We got Austin Hannum, Brian Vaggi, Logan Writing, and you tackle that one. Hokan Kveset. Nailed it. He's my buddy from uh, Norway. He's actually really fun to watch. can throw a mile. Cool. Well, that should be a fun round two. I think we might stick a cam on Paul's card, too. He's got double G, Rico. So Nice. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Eagle, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was a total pleasure. Happy to be here. Love doing commentary. Awesome, man. All right. Thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll catch you in round two.